What is going on, guys? Back for Friday's breakdown. Um, really feel good about where we were at today, both uh, betting wise and DFS. So the same, going to be same format again. Uh, I'm going to go game by game from a DFS perspective first, and then we're going to drop over, um, drop a few bets, and of course I'll have all those posted on the uh, on the betting sheet for the the tournament here after the show. Um, going to give just a second for, for people to drop in. If, if you are watching live, of course, tomorrow morning, um, if you're watching this, you got still a little bit of time, uh, to do so before lock around noon yet again, awesome day of, of college basketball here. Um, saw some upsets, Oakland, which we were on, uh, money line and spread, um, just a really good start. Samford's not looking good. We've got a sweat um, to move on in the king of the bracket. Um, just over or just took the lead um, just a bit ago. The, the only worry that I have is, you know, the, the only difference we have left is DJ. He's got DJ Horn um, versus Dickinson and. Jermaine Marshall, who has just not done anything. Um, but, uh, you know, this game getting out of hand for Kansas, hopefully they stick with them for the next, you know, 10 minutes or so till there's five left and Dickinson can can close it out. I'm up five right now. So that would be nice to, to move on to round two tomorrow. Um, really interesting slate. I don't think it's, you know, quite as cut and dry as it was today. Um, I think you you got to take some more chances with value. Um, maybe not go all the way up to the top of pricing um, when we get into that, uh, which is scary when you've got Zach Eady on the slate because um, we always want to jam him in, especially in, in optimal building. I think there's a path to do so, but um, a lot of solid plays in the mid-range that, you know, if you think Purdue just destroys Grambling and, and E.D. plays 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes, he could, of course, smash in that, that amount of time. He could put up 50, 55, 60 points in 20 or 25 minutes. But, uh, you know, I think that's an interesting decision on the slate. Um, so, and I apologize if I continue to look at the TV here and there. Um <laughs> sweating out this uh, um, king of the bracket uh, entry up five right now still. So hopefully Dickinson can get pretty much full run here if they could close this in a little bit. Um, if you've not joined us over in Discord, be sure to, to go over to the links in the description of this video. Um, grab an all sports package, going to get you $25 a month. 225 for the year, get you all these sports that we have listed here, golf, NASCAR, MLB, NBA, NHL, soccer, uh, NFL, college sports. Um, you can do the monthly for the college sports, get you all the way through the tournament. That one is $15 for the month. Um, great deal there when we've we've got covered betting. Uh, we've got, uh, which is was off to a great start until Samford today. Uh, um had them plus seven. It's not looking great for that. And some on the money line as well. But I think it was up like seven units um, up to this point. Obviously, that'll drop off. Uh, let me see. Yeah, 7.1 units. We're going to dr probably drop 1.6. So we're going to go back down. Still going to be an over five unit day um, on the betting sheet. Um, and then DFS looking solid. Had cores. For every uh, slate that we we had, afternoon, late, night, main, two of them for main, a GPP core, as well as the main, you know, single entry cash game type core. Um, we'll do so again tomorrow for sure. So be sure to hop in, grab, grab you a, a subscription there and get in the Discord. Uh, I'm going to switch on over to the sheet. I'm going to go very quickly through an overall, you know, how do the games look from a, a Vegas perspective? Um, of course, 
you know, UConn, massive favorite, big implied total. Marquette, one of the bigger totals on the slate at 158 and a half. Um, and they have a 14 and a half point favorite over Western Kentucky, who's one of the fastest teams. I think they're one of the top, if not the top pace team in the country. Um, so they're going to pace up Marquette a lot. Marquette could put up 90 in this spot. Um, you know, Alabama, College of Charleston, uh, Bama always gets in in races, 173 total in that one, 91-81. So we're going to want to look there for sure and see um, if we've got some value. Um, so I'll go over the spreads as we go game by game. Um, we're going to start out with Northwestern and FAU is going to kick it off a little afternoon Eastern tomorrow. Um Northwestern is a three and a half point dog at 143 total. FAU coming off the big run uh, last year into the Final Four. Um, haven't been that good this year, even though they returned a lot of their pieces. Uh, I'm not high on this team. The, the downside to Northwestern is they've got some injuries. Nicholson is out. Um, they lost Ty Berry a while back for the year. So still kind of finding their footing, but the two main studs for them, Boo Booey and Brooks Barnheiser, um, both great plays around that 8K price tag. Um, Barnheiser is going to be the guy who gets you more peripheral stats. Boo Booey is going to be the guy who gets you – gets there mostly through scoring. Um, so, you know, definitely uh, both of those guys are in play. Booey a little more maybe for tournaments. Barnheiser – more of the cash game type play. Uh, Langborg is 6,200. He's he's a fine GPP option in that mid-range. Uh, on the other side, I don't like the price tags on anybody except maybe a John L. Davis, who has traditionally been the highest price guy um, for FAU most of the year. Now he's under 8K, and, and Goldeen is, is over um, him at 8K. Don't like that uh, with his volatility. Um so John L. Davis would be the only guy for me that I would look at um, on the FAU side. Luke Hunger, um, interested to see what people do with him tomorrow. We saw a split after Nicholson was out between Hunger and Blake Preston. Um, I think Hunger projects better. He's going to, of course, be the guy who gets the ownership. Um, I think he's a solid play. He's a guy that's going to help you get up to 80. You know, if he plays 20 to 25 minutes, I think that, you know, could pay off, get you, you know, try to get you around that 12 to 15 mark, pay off the price tag. I don't have a problem with Luke Hunger. Um, but he's, you know, traditionally he's not been a guy who's going to get you a big, um, a big score. It's just more of what does he allow you to get? Um Moving on, we're going to have Baylor and Colgate. Baylor is a 14-point favorite and a 138.5 total. Um, starting on the Baylor side, Ray J. Dennis uh, rates out for me as the best play. Um, let me sort this by kind of like I did last night with point per dollar. Um, all right, Baylor, Colgate. So Ray J. Dennis, um, I think is, is the top overall option on this team. Very good play at 7,200. Just the price tag's a little bit low. Probably he should be upper, upper sevens. Um, Jacoby Walter and, and Yves Missy, um, both GPP options in the low 6K range. I think Missy has a lot of upside, upside in this matchup. Um, He's a guy that can get, you know, get get you there in a lot of ways with peripheral stats. Walter's more the guy who needs to get hot scoring. He's going to be, I mean, he is a, a good NBA prospect, just inconsistent as we see with a lot of these guys in this uh, um, day and age that are great pros future prospects. Uh, Dennis, I think he's in the cash pool um, of options. On the other side. Colgate, Braden Smith rates out very well. He's a little too cheap here at 6,900. The rest of the team, 
just kind of spread out. Um, I don't think I'll be playing anybody except for maybe a Braden Smith. Um, and because of the price tag, I think he does stay in the pool for all formats. San Diego State and UAB. Um, San Diego State coming off the big run last year. Um, I'm not high on them at all. I have them in my bracket losing here to UAB. Um, the only play that I have from San Diego State here is Jadon Ladee, uh, 8,900. He's been a stud all year. Um, big, big time, big man matchup between him and Yaxel Lindenborg, uh, 9,200 on the other side of this game. I think, you know, I think we see a back and forth battle between them. San Diego State is a seven point favorite. Um, this is probably one that I'm going to look at uh, betting this maybe some of the same as I did today spread and and money line on UAB. Uh, Lindenborg, GPP option, 9200 price tag's a little high. Um, you got to remember all these guys that are up in this price range. It's hard to fit them with a an ED. So you're probably giving up ED to get either of those two guys um, unless you just fully punt a lot of spots. Um, so I think, you know, most of this game is GPP for me. Uh, Lindenborg, Vasquez, Ephraim Johnson would be one of the guys just because we have less value on this slate. 4,700 playing over 35 minutes in a game, I think, um, or lately he has. And, and I think that's a solid, you know, if you land in that upper fours range, last guy in, take the minutes um, from a Johnson. I like that play. Vasquez is a little too cheap as well at 55, more still more of a GPP option. Um, could we get a back door on the spread here for Samford? They got to cut it a little bit to 15 with 11 to go. Um, but uh, let's see how the the king of the brackets look. Got to got to keep the sweat going while we go over tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's it's looking really good, guys. Uh, up up 12 and a half points. Horns about done. Once Horns done the the matchup is 100% done. Um, and NC State's up 14 with three minutes to go. So feel pretty good about where we're at there, even though we had the one bust in that lineup of Jermaine Marshall. Other than that, um, that could have been a takedown in the, even like the $5 single entry or something. Um, that lineup's in the cash, and Marshall's just tanking it. Uh, but uh, – um, all right. Uh, so – UAB, more of GPP options, like I said, just because of the price tags, except, you know, Ephraim Johnson, I think if you landed there in cash, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world uh, just because of the minutes floor. Marquette, Western Kentucky, talked about this game at the top that, you know, the pace that Western Kentucky plays with, um, they're going to drag Marquette along. Still remains to be seen um, the status of Tyler Kolick. We did see – that he practiced in full, so I do expect him to play. How much does he play? I think it de all depends on the game um, flow. You know, do or does Western Kentucky push Marquette here in this one? If they do, I think you could see Colet go for, you know, 30 to 35 minutes and, and definitely, you know, get there at 8,100. Definitely tournament only. I don't know that I even would get there. I'd have to be playing quite a few lineups. Um, Oso inside, 7,400, way too cheap for this type of, of pace-up matchup. Really like him. He's one of the top overall plays on the slate. Probably going to be a core piece for me. Uh, Brandon Newman on the other side. Well, sorry, Cam Jones um, has stepped up big time with the absence of Kolick. I don't love the price tag of 8K for him, but if you want to take the shot that Kolick's limited or – um, you know, whatever, you know, narrative you want to put in there. Cam Jones could be a GPP option. On the other side, Western Kentucky, the way they play this fast is they spread things out a lot with minutes. Um, so there's not a lot of, you know, safe plays here. We got to watch the – I think we do really need to watch this Dante Allen news. Um, if he is out, I think you see even more minutes um, – 
for a guy like uh, Brandon Newman, I think he would become a definite core piece still in play um, for sure. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and change him to um, – a priority instead of a secondary option. I think he's still in play just because of the price tag at, at 51. Um, I think, you know, he's kind of the safest minutes guy on this team. Um, I, I like him. Uh, Bubba Carr Fay 4,400 is another, you know, fine option as well for tournaments. Um, that's kind of, where my interest stops is, you know, watch that status of, of Dante Allen. If he's out, Newman's probably going to be a lock for me. Oso's a pretty definite core piece at this moment. Um, got it down to 13 with the ball. Let's see if they can uh, – Samford, oh, knocked it to 10. So, with nine minutes left, they could they could uh, pull back and at least cover this game. Um so that's that's where I'm at on this one. Some definite priorities for me here with Newman and Oso, um, and again, watch that news for Allen. Moving on, we got UConn and Stetson. Not a game that I'm going to have tons of interest in. Stetson um, gets probably the, of course, the toughest matchup in the tournament. Uh, maybe outside of you could argue Houston from a defensive perspective. Um, I think. You could really only look at two GPP shots in this game. Uh, Stefan Swenson uh, for Stetson plays lots of minutes, big usage. Um, 6,800 is too cheap for his role and, and what he does, but he gets a massive um, step up in class here going up, up against UConn. Uh, I don't think I'll get there probably in any lineups that I make, but if I was building 20, I might throw a sprinkle of him in there. Klingon is cheap um, for his upside at 7,900. Um, I don't think I play any UConn just because of the expected blowout. They're going to limit minutes and try to save these guys for later in the tournament. Clemson and New Mexico, this is a different story. This is one that I'm going to be all over from a DFS perspective um, and a, probably a betting perspective as well. Um, pretty high on New Mexico here. Have them winning a couple games in the tournament in my bracket. Um, lots of good plays here. So New Mexico starts with Jalen House. I think the, the Clemson matchup is a great one for him. The freshman JT Toppin down low going up against P.J. Hall. I think Toppin's a very good play at 7,500 as well. Um, Jamal Mashburn, if you look at his minutes, um, I think I have him a little high on minutes right now. Um, at 31, I think he comes back down in the mid-20s. Um, now that Donovan Dent is expected to be fully healthy here. Um, so I think, you know, if you're looking at GPP options, I'm going to go probably lower Mashburn a little bit here. Um, on the other side for Clemson, P.J. Hall rates out very well. Always a good DFS option. And Joe Girard um, at this price tag has a lot of upside that he could crush this price if he gets hot shooting. So really three good options. Uh, I love Jalen House here. He's Him and Oso are, are pretty definite core pieces for me as of right now. Um, we'll see if anything changes um, in the morning when I start throwing, you know, bills together, uh, playing with the optimizer a little bit. Um, but House, uh, really expecting – uh, him to, to slot into the core. Probably not going to play him and Toppin together, but I definitely might look at playing him and Hall together. Um, so, again, lots of good options in this game. New Mexico is actually the favorite here as the 11-152 total, 77-74. Uh, really like this game. Auburn and Yale, um, back to kind of a game that I don't have a ton of interest in. Um if you look at uh, on the Yale side, they're really rating out as the best point per dollar plays, and that's just because we know what Bruce Pearl does with minutes and blowouts. Even if it the blow by blowout, I mean fifteen points could be even him dropping this down. Um, man, Sanford cuts it to eight with nine to go. They still got time to do this thing. <laughs> um, Matt Noling 
uh, rates out as the best play in this game. 6K is a little too cheap for him. Danny Wolf does have upside here at, at 8,300. I think if you want to look at him in GPPs, um, I don't hate the idea of playing, you know, one of these Yale pieces and then running it back with the Jedi Broom, who has big upside, but, man, he's not going to push 30 minutes probably in this game, um, especially if they get up double digits. Bruce is just going to sit him and rest. Um, but you can see right there, 1.42 fantasy points per minute on the season. Um, just massive upside if he can get the minutes. Um, Nowling would be my favorite play in the game. Danny Wolf, interesting GPP option. And uh, Janai Broom, if you think this game stays closer than than it is. Oh, man, feeling it. Samford was feeling it a little bit there, down eight, just chucking the three in transition. Um, Florida, Colorado, big, big pace game here. Florida plays no defense. Um, love targeting Florida, love targeting these teams that play no defense, which we have a few of. Um, so there's some definite plays in this game. Uh, very close spread, one and a half. Uh, Florida's the favorite right now, 158 and a half total. This, this game could get up into the 80s. Um, lots of plays, lots of plays. Tristan Da Silva, uh, 6,800, just way too cheap for him. He's going to play a lot of minutes. He's going to um, be kind of the – uh, one of the key cogs out there. Um, so really interested in, in De Silva. He's a borderline uh, core play, possibly a core play as well. Hadley and KJ Simpson, I lean. Um, if I could get up to KJ Simpson, I, I really do like him, but I lean that as more of a tournament option. Same with Hadley um, at 6,300. Um, Eddie Lampkin is, is the other guy for Colorado that, uh, he's come on recently uh, for them. Solid usage for him at, at 20 for his role. Um, I think he could pay off a 6K price tag as well. Uh, on the other side for Florida, we saw the just horrific injury to, to hand gloating. So they've got to um, they've got to fix or, or slot in some minutes for him inside. Um, you know, Tyrese Samuel might could get a few more extra run if he pushes into the low 30s. He's a very good play at 75. Uh, Pullian is kind of the scorer um, of the backcourt there. Uh, 7,300 is a fine option for him, you know, in tournaments if you think he gets hot. Uh, down low, you've got uh, Condon. I probably butchered that name. And Thomas Hall. Um, Eileen taking that discount at 4,900 versus 62 for – with uh, with Hall is down at 49. Uh, Denzel Aberdeen, uh, 3,500, really cheap. He's got a bump in minutes lately. Um, I think he's really an only GPP only for sure. Um, if you think those minutes continue, if you guys have any questions about any of these games, any you know overarching thoughts on the slate, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, and I'll get to them. I'm checking the, the chat here and there, and we'll definitely answer any questions. All right, Nebraska, Texas A&M. Um, let's see here. I have a soft spot for Nebraska, um, all because of the rink mast uh, is the one that got me into the, <laughs> into the king of the bracket earlier in the year. Um, when he just absolutely smoked, it was like on Tuesday slate or something, um, put up 50 or 60, um, just torched the slate at like four to five percent ownership. Um, he's cheap here, but he's become a lot more inconsistent than he was early in the year. Uh, on the AM side, uh, Tyrese Radford, um, and Wade Taylor are both you know decent options. Uh, Radford rates out better for me. Um, I think you could can definitely go there. Um, playing max minutes, 7,500 fair for him. Anderson Garcia is a really good rebounder. You know, that's how he's going to get there at 5,600. Uh, if you want to go there in tournaments and hope, you know, you can scorch out a, a double double if he can score enough. Um, Bryce Williams on the other side rates out as the best point per dollar play for Nebraska. Don't have a ton of interest in them. Um, but if you wanted to take a, a 
tournament shot on him or Jawan Gary. I wouldn't hate that. All right, Duke and Vermont. Uh, Duke is a 12-point favorite here. Uh, don't have a ton of uh, interest in this game as a whole. Uh, Filipowski, 8,600, came on a little bit um, in the tournament, uh, in the ACC tournament compared to what he was doing early in the year. So I think he's in play for tournaments if you want to um, go up to him and, and hope this game stays a little closer and, you know, the, the volume is there for him, even though it's a low, low total. Uh, the rest of Duke, you know, we've got the, the injury news that Caleb Foster has done for the year. Uh, that just solidifies the minutes for McCain, Roach, and Proctor, uh, who are playing max minutes already. Um you know, I think you could you could take a GPP shot on them. I don't have a ton of interest there, though. On the other side for Vermont, Nick Fiorillo will go with. 4,500 is a, a very fair price for him playing, you know, upper 20s minutes. Um, I think he's in play as one of the, the better value plays on the slate. 22.5% um, usage rate. Um, I think he's in play uh, there for sure. Purdue and Grambling. So here we get to Edie. You know, what do you want to do with, with him? I think that's the main and probably only question in this game. Um, you know, they're favored by 26 and a half. Can you find the value to get there? Is he going to play enough minutes? Does it matter if he plays enough minutes? <laughs> you know, 1.51 fantasy points per minute. He can smash with limited minutes. We know that 10 is a tough tag to get to when there's not a ton of value, though. Um, and, uh, you know, the rest of, of Purdue, Lance Jones and Braden Smith, I think are interesting tournament tournament looks. Um, maybe they're the guys that, you know, get there without Edie. Wouldn't play them with Edie. Um, either one of those guys I would play as a pose and as a pivot to Edie in tournaments. Um not, I don't know that I've played anybody else from Purdue most of all the year. Um, Grambling, uh, Moten was, Tremichael Moten was the reason they won <laughs> that overtime uh, play-in game. 7K, decent price, but again, only for tournaments in this type of matchup now that they flipped to being uh, 26 and a half point underdogs and, you know, middling to low total, 56 implied totals, one of the lower on the slate uh, for Grambling. Bama and College of Charleston, uh, talked about this one, highest total on the slate. Uh, definitely want to look and see, you know, what we can get to here. Um, lots of good plays. So we'll start with Bama, Aaron Estrada, one of the better, you know, 8K, 9K range plays on the slate. I have a lot of interest in him. Mark Sears also rates out very well, as he usually does. He's 9K. Um, Grant Nelson is, is, you know, if you think of back to coming into the year, and, man, this game's four-point four game. Samford, uh, six minutes to go, making a big, big run. Um, Grant Nelson was the third. Well, maybe he wasn't even the third. He was one of the, the three on level footing to start this year of a big three for Bama. Um, he's kind of fell back. He's had some foul issues lately. 7K is interesting if you want to take a, a GPP shot. Um, again, I would rank those Estrada, Sears, Nelson on that side. Uh, looking over at – all right, we have – we'll go over to College of Charleston here in a sec, but we have locked up the um, – Move to round two in the king of the bracket. So nice, nice to move on there. Um, really disappointed about the Jermaine Marshall um, deal. I'm just looking at other tournaments and man, high scoring night for sure. Um, but I think with him, if he could have put up, you know, 20, where would that have put me? Wouldn't it, it wouldn't have got me close to winning actually. So you had to have had Cousinard and uh, some of those other guys, Golke, 
uh, who was nearly 20% on. Um, but, hey, we're moving on in the king of the bracket, so really, really excited about that. See if we can see a a, uh, a buzzer beater here. All right, moving over to College of Charleston. Have quite a bit of interest in them as well. Um, this is most all year when we did see them on the slate back in like November. You know, this was a team that spread minutes out a lot. Um, and during the conference tournament, they condensed that a little bit more. And that brings into play guys like Reen Smith, Kobe Rogers, Brozovich, who is the, the usage leader on this team. Uh, Bryce Butler is a, a nice, you know, tournament value option. So I really, really like this game. I mean, we're, we're looking at a 91-81 projected score here um, per Vegas odds. Um, so I think you could definitely go to like an Estrada, Reen Smith. Um, it's not going to kill the bank either. Uh, Kobe Rogers, like I said, all those guys I think are in play. So really have tons of interest in this game overall. Uh, my favorite in the entire game being Estrada, for sure. Houston and Longwood, this is one that I'm probably going to stay away from. I don't see how Longwood does anything um, against Houston. Uh, but on the flip side of that, I don't have much interest in Houston with, you know, low total. They're, they're at a 76 implied total. But, man, they're just going to get so far ahead, run away and hide, and, and it's just going to be tough for uh, – Man, they could tie it on this possession, Sanford. Um, they're going to probably run a, run away and hide. Um, and I don't see taking, you know, shots on Jamal Shedd and, and some of these guys. Um, I just don't think, you know, it makes a lot of sense. So, Manuel Sharp is 6K. Maybe you just take the cheaper option there and, and go for it. But I think I'll stay away from this game as a whole. Wisconsin and JMU, three games left on the slate. Wisconsin, JMU. Definitely some interest here. Um, I think there's some really good plays, looking at some value options, you know, kind of mid-range plays, starting with Wisconsin. Two guys in particular for them, A.J. Store, 7,300, big usage rate, 32%. Um, conference tournament, he, you know, carried this team a lot. Um, Stephen Crow gets a good interior matchup here against JMU. Um, I think he's a fine GPP look, but store would be the priority for me from this uh, this team. On the other side, I think there's four JMU guys in play, two that I would really look at for tournaments because of these – or for cash games because of these uh, price tags. Noah Friedel and, and TJ Bickerstaff at 61 and 5,400. Um, they rate out really, really well. Um, I have a lot of interest in them. Hopefully, you know, landing in this range without a lot of value, if you can land somewhere in that range, you know, take one of those guys. I like that landing there. Terrence Edwards is a fine GPP look at 7,100. If you have the, the – uh, if you have the salary, oh, man, this is going to be a wild ending. I can already tell. Uh, and Xavier Brown, 5,300 would be the pivot to like a Fredell, maybe – Late in the day, say you got Fredell on the on your team and you're behind, you know, you need to make a swap, go to like a Xavier Brown, um, which would get you definitely off the chalkier piece. Uh, and they write out pretty similar. All right. So again, really like that game. Uh Utah State TCU. Um Really like this one as well. And uh, so, they're, again, kind of like tonight, there's a lot of good options late in the slate. Um, and we'll start with TCU. So, Manuel Miller, this price tag is the lowest I've seen most of the season. Um, he was at, you know, he kind of varied anywhere from 8K down to 72, 7,300. Now he's 69. Um, good matchup. You know, Utah State going up against Osabor, but um, I think it's a solid total for them at 77 and a half, four point favorites. 
Um, really like Miller here. I think he's a very solid option. Um, Micah Peavy, Ernest Uday, um, I think are very good mid, mid-range mid value options. Um, and then Chuck O'Bannon down low at 4,300. We've seen recently um, – Uh, we have seen O'Bannon start a couple games here, um, solid minutes. You know, with the lack of value, 4,300 might make him a little popular. Um, and I think he's definitely in play there as well, um, especially if he's starting, which I don't see why he wouldn't be um, based on the last couple games. Um, Utah State, you get Osabor, who's just a, a stud from a DFS perspective. Um, 8,800 is a tough price tag to get to. Again, you're going to have to give up Edie to play him more than likely. Um, I think he's definitely in play. I lean towards a $1,100 discount to Darius Brown, who I think gets a really, really good matchup. Interesting uh, matchup against TCU, maybe a little underrated um, matchup here. Um, and I think he could just fill it up in this spot. Um, going to play max minutes, you know, upper 30s. He's got a uh, – let's see here. I think he could really put up a nice score um, and terrorize TCU a little bit here. Um, so I think those two are definitely in play. I lean Brown just because of the savings. Uh, you could also look at an Isaac Johnson down low at 4K. I didn't mention Jameer Nelson. Um, he's a, just a GPP look at 6,100 in that mid-range if you're building, you know, say 20 teams. Um, but again, overall, this is, you know, a really good spot late in the slate uh, that you probably want to have some PMR left for. St. Mary's and Grand Canyon, this one is one that I don't have a ton of interest in. Um, here late in the day, probably nobody except maybe eh, maybe one we'll go with in play for cash games, and that's Mitchell Saxon. Um, 7,300, I think he's a, a fine play. A um, little bit of a pace up for St. Mary's, who just plays slow overall, but this is a 131.5 total. Um, they're favored by 5.5. Um, Marcellanus uh, definitely butchered that one. 7,600, he's the distributor for this team. You know, kind of gets everybody where they need to be. He's going to get there through, um, you know, assists, steals, hopefully getting you double-digit points. Um, I think he's a decent tournament look. Saxon's more of a ca- cashy type play. On the other side, I just don't have a ton of interest at these price, ta- price tags for Grand Canyon. Uh, Tyon Grant Foster is the guy who they're going to need if they're going to compete in this game. 8,500 is just too much for me with the, the way this slate sets up. Um, you know, if he was under 8K or something, I would definitely have a, some interest there. Um, but with this total, 63 implied for for them, I don't think I can uh, can get there. The rest of, of Ray Harrison going to play tons of minutes, 6,200, you know, if you want to take a shot there. I just don't like this game environment uh, very much at all. Uh, I didn't mention Mahaney on the other side. He's very scoring reliant. Um, he plays a lot of minutes, but you're going to need to get the points there. All right. I think that covers um, the DFS side of things. I'm going to go through some bets. Um, I will have rankings up maybe before bed tonight. Um maybe early in the morning. And then cores again, for all slates as well, will be up in the morning uh, for sure. Um, Let me pull up. I haven't updated in about an hour, the odds. So let me pull up the current odds and we'll kind of go, go through this slate and see what we can, uh, can drum up just like we did last night. That'd be so awesome if we could sneak back and get this massive run to, and get a, a win here. Uh, covering the spread would, would give us a positive return on the game for sure. So they're plus 
let's see, they're down four right now. I might be behind some of you guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, down four right now with three to go. I think they could they can hang in there. Hang in there and get that plus seven. I know some people got a little bit better number than that uh, here. All right. FAU Northwestern. Uh, from a betting perspective, I will lean towards Northwestern. Can I pull the pull it here? Hmm. Yeah, let's take the plus three and a half. I'll, I'll take the points here with Northwestern. You could definitely play a little bit on the money line too, but I'll probably I'm just gonna stick to uh, I'm just gonna stick to the spread here. So we'll start it out with Northwestern plus three and a half is still up on DraftKings. Uh, UAB, I've already mentioned that one. That one's dropped to six and a half. Dang, uh, should have locked that one in earlier. Maybe we can shop it around a little bit, um, see what we can find. But on DraftKings, I'm saying six and a half and then plus 220. That one will be one of the one unit on the the spread, half unit on the uh, money line uh, with UAB. Um, Let's see here. Don't have a ton of conviction until we get down to New Mexico. I'm going to lay the two and a half with them. So we'll lay the two and a half with New Mexico. Uh, let's see, Auburn and Yale. Florida. I'm going to go with Colorado. Um, they were plus one and a half. Still plus one and a half or minus 102 on the money line. I'll just take the point, pay you know 10, 10 points extra juice. We've seen crazier. Let's see here. I'll summarize all these here at the end um, for sure. I just I don't like laying dogs um, or laying big favorites. What games are you targeting the most? I'll I'll summarize here here in just a bit, but I think that was from a DFS perspective. It was Bama College of Charleston. Um, I, I would have to go back. There, there were definite Utah State TCU was a big one that I was targeting. Um, Wisconsin JMU has good plays on both sides. Uh, Florida Colorado has some good plays on both sides. Clemson New Mexico has good plays on both sides. Um, so the, you know, there's quite a few games that I'm I'm targeting. I on these biggest slates. Even in tournaments, I don't usually game stack. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely teams and games that I'm targeting maybe a little more than others, but I'm not going to be game stacking forcibly. I mean, if it happens, it happens. But <laughs> um, it's not something I'm going out of my way to, to do like I would in, in like football. Um, I don't. What I was saying about the, the betting side is I just don't like laying big, big favorites like a – you know, Auburn, Marquette, double-digit favorites in tournament games. Don't don't like that. Um, so I'm going to lay the two and a half with New Mexico here. Um, and then the Colorado plus one and a half. I'll take the, the one and a half. Um, let's see. Kind of like Nebraska here. Oh, hmm. So tempted to take Vermont. Uh, I I just don't like where Duke's at, but I think I'll stay away from that one. Um, man, Nebraska's right on the edge of taking them. Call uh, here. Here we go. Here's another one. College of Charleston plus nine and a half. One unit, half unit on the plus three sixty. Um, Money line for College of Charleston. I like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
and then I'll go. I've got a lot tomorrow. <laughs> um, how many is that here? All right, that that's where I'll stick for now. Um, so just to summarize, and I'll have all these posted on the betting sheet as soon as I get off of here. Um, and, and some, they're actually, last night, I couldn't really see any more that I would add today. Um, I can see some that I could potentially add tomorrow. Um, so be on the lookout for that. So we had Northwestern plus three and a half, uh, UAB plus six and a half, one unit, half unit on the plus 220 money line against San Diego State. Uh, laying the two and a half with New Mexico, uh, plus one and a half with Colorado. Um, and plus nine and a half, one unit on College of Charleston, plus 360 half unit on that money line. That's where we'll be. I'll have all those posted. Um, this game's sitting right at seven, so it's going to be the difference probably between a – probably going to get – let's see, we would get – if they cover the spread, we're going to get half a unit. We're going to, it's the difference between a five and a half and a seven and a half unit day to start. Um, can't complain about that either way. So, however, this lands, um, really excited about how we started the betting um, portion of, of March Madness. Uh, so, good luck to everybody tomorrow. Um, if you guys have questions, Drop them to me in the, the Discord. I'll be sure to answer those. Again, I'll have ranks and cores up. More than likely, we'll both be in the morning. Um, and then uh, we will have um, – I'll have all the betting uh, lines that I just went over uh, posted to the, the betting sheet right away as soon as I hop off here. Good luck. Hope to see you guys in the Discord if uh, I don't already. Um, really. Hoping to have a very strong weekend here. Again, we move into to round two, the king of the bracket. Let's keep that going tomorrow um, and see what we can do if we can't you know, run that thing a little farther. Good luck, and, and let's turn on some green.